Hi, I'm Marco Fassai and I'm here with Buzz City to interview uh, an exciting new gallery owner and artist that I've known for a long time actually, Rob Boss. Rob, I think it's really interesting that when we first met it was at your studio space which was also a gallery and now here we are again in another studio space which is also a gallery. Can you tell me a little bit about how the beginning has led to this new show called The End? Um, <coughs> well, this space came about from uh, my history and experience with my previous space and uh, some of the experiences that I've had over the last uh, three or four years since I closed that space, or I think it's been six now already. But yeah, you were at the, the first show which was a um, photographic participatory uh, installation where I had people come in and try on my father's suits and uh, uh, it was it was an installation. It was a an art sort of concept piece in a sense, and um, that sort of like led the way uh, for that gallery for three years, which was experimental practices and um, you know young local emerging artists and giving them um, the space and the freedom to do uh, whatever it was they wanted to do that they were passionate or interested in. And uh, <clears throat> after I closed that gallery to focus on my own practice, um, shortly thereafter I made a, a mobile museum, which was the width of my door, the height of my door, and about six feet long, which could go out and then go out into the world, and it would open up with doors and tables, and there was a mini art gallery, a mini coffee shop, a mini studio, um, all of these different things. But um, in, in reality, it was too heavy to sort of move around, but um, though like that, that was a, an instance where I was trying to sort of bring together all of my sort of like interests and needs to sort of live a fulfilled life, which um, for me include having a place to live, a place to work, and a place to show, and uh, as an artist, of course. And so I'm working on a studio in the basement, and I've got uh, a gallery in my living room in this. Um, much more sort of uh, legitimate sort of like storefront entrance way so it kind of says gallery and then it slips into living room and then it goes to kitchen and then there's more residence like uh, my own sort of like my room and there's a bathroom like it's got all of the things that you need. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm really interested by this topic that you've chosen for your inaugural exhibition. Because this is, in a sense, a new beginning for you, and yet you've chosen to title the call for submission, The End. Mm -hmm. um, in one sense, I was thinking, because um, it's been very much on, on people's minds uh, for the last few years, you can just sort of like name all of the, you know, end of the world movies from Independence Day to, you know, 2012. and the day before, the last day after, and all of that kind of thing. The, ra been, the rapture. There's the rapture that was supposed to happen in May, and whew, just yeah. we got through that, and we've got 2012 coming up. Um, but yeah, I was also thinking about um, starting this new space, and uh, it being a very ironic way to start it, to start it with the end. Because in a sense, uh, if you start with the end, then you're kind of free to go anywhere, and yes, it is uh, like very much sort of like a, uh, a symbolic of uh, a new beginning. Because when something ends and there's a definitive ending, that means there's a, a definitive beginning um, to happen after. Like everywhere else, you're kind of in the middle of something, but when you're at the end, that's when you can really see the beginning uh, maybe a bit more clearly because whatever it was is now done. And the other big thing is that I wanted it to be a big show, and so um, I wanted to get as many people into the show as possible. And that kind of goes with, uh, you know, um, like Bosch and like, you know, just like Armageddon and like, you know, just filling the space with lots of stuff to kind of have that kind of energy and excitement and stuff. Um, and uh, the end is also. Um, so open as a theme because I didn't specify as much as it's the maybe connotation that people take away first which is the end of the world mm -hmm. but it's also the end of a life um, the end of a, a school sort of career mm -hmm. the end of a relationship um, there's all sorts of uh, ends that are happening uh, Takashi Hara has a piece uh, called uh, Last Train that depicts uh, Japanese commuters <laughs> commuters passed out on these subways in the most ridiculous conditions and so it's kind of like 
talking about the end of the day and that kind of exhaustion and just sort of like, you know, you're at your wit's ends. There's lots of uh, ways to sort of like play with that and get um, get people to put work into the show because the other thing with uh, this first exhibition is that I really wanted to get the people who want to use the space to use it and thereby give it direction um, because like it's, it's going to be influenced by my personal tastes and things like that of course but I want to see who wants to use it and how they want to use it and then let the space sort of like evolve with those concerns rather than having like a very definitive idea of it's going to be commercial art gallery that sells uh, work of um, you know these five or eight artists at these kind of price brackets to this kind of audience I don't know that and well and you do have quite a variety of prices in the works for sale here Oh, and definitely. quite a variety in, of artists at different stages in their careers. Mm -hmm. So I like to Cassie, who just graduated recently from the University of Regina, to people that have been long time established members of the art scene in Saskatchewan, like Michelle Boutin, or um, even the treasures from your own personal art collection on display. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about sort of some of the price range and some of the different artists? Who excites you in terms of the old art that you're selling? Um, hmm. I'm kind of excited to see how about Dave Gilhooly, which is yeah. way back in art history and yeah. attachment. No, like I'm very fortunate and it's probably why I moved in the direction of uh, arts and culture. Um, I was raised in a house where there was Joe Fafard and Wolf Perot and Jerry Dither and uh, Vic Sikansky um, all around. And so uh, I grew up with a lot of these things and so I've been fortunate to be able to hold on uh, to some of them, uh, some of the smaller things as I've sort of moved around in different things. And uh, what's really great and what's great with the openness of the theme of the end is that I have a lot of work that you can very easily sort of uh, have it make sense uh, within that concept so that I can show, um, you know, some of Michelle Boutin's work from 2004 that's dealing with sort of like an end as well as like some, uh, you know, Takashi who just graduated, um, but then also have like Dave Gilhooly's Exploding World, which is such a fantastic piece. It's so humorous. Um, and I, I remember someone telling me about coming to that lecture where he started talking about California funk and what you can do with clay, and he built this ball of clay and put a firecracker into it and lit it, and it blew up. Yeah. And then he took the results and put that into account, and, and that is essentially what you have on display today. Would, would that be online? That, that exploding. I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't seen that work online. Um, my my father bought it from an artist in uh, in the city, and um, so yeah, like it might have been from a demonstration or something. But like yeah, it's it's such a beautiful piece, and it's so humorously sort of uh, touches the theme. And so like that's a way that I can bring things from my own collection and put them on display as well as having um, younger artists, mid-career artists, and uh, just get the, the space open. Um, and one of the things that I really like about how all of the work has come together is that it's not very one-sided. It's not all sort of like uh, punk graffiti skulls while there is some of work like that mm -hmm. um, by myself. <laughs> and some others, I'm sure. Oh, I think uh, your skulls are riffing off of Andy Warhol a bit, aren't they? Yeah, a couple of them are, Some definitely. Sort of there. Mm -hmm. So, to, to have them, as well as uh, younger artists, it just kind of makes it more full. And there's not too much of one thing, and so, like, it looks... Like, I'm really happy with the, the variety of, uh, you know, artists, artists' work, and, um, yeah, I know it came together fantastically. Yeah. I noticed you have a, quite a variety of things here. You've got everything from a light box to um, comic books, like mini comics by local artists now in Dobson. Can you talk to me a little bit about um, maybe one of the pieces that surprised you the most when it came in? <laughs> well, there's there's two two big surprises. Uh, one was uh, getting a work that had testicles. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called the End of Virility, displayed on a plane by Emma Jordan Clark, a local artist in the city, and that's exactly what it is. It's a skinny, phallic sort of pedestal with uh, a jar of, of formaldehyde with some testicles in it. That's so, very Damien Hirst. <laughs> yeah, no, and like, I'm so thrilled to have something 
that uh, is very specifically touching on the theme, but in such a such a curious way and yeah. such a, a funny way and something that you would never expect. Yeah. Um, but the other unexpected um, uh, artwork that has come come into the space was uh, I before I left for Chicago to do my MFA um, in 2009. Just in the months leading up, I received these paintings in the mailbox, and they were by like a, a local artist. I assume sort of um, you know appreciating me, like they it specifically spoke to some of the projects that I've done and things like that. And um, I don't know, they these artworks by Ardell Padenom sort of like crop up around the cathedral area and different sort of uh, clubs and things like that. Um, there was uh, some press recently in the Cathedral Village Voice about um, signs that said the end that were just like littered around. I, I thought that was you. It, I know. <laughs> I thought it was. See, that's the thing is that people think that it's me, but like I wouldn't be my own secret admirer. I'd need to be a pretty <laughs> sad person to sort of put mailboxes or like put paintings on my mailbox and like, oh wow, look what I got. Um, so like I I still don't know exactly who who this artist is, but when I saw that and I was working towards this show. Um, I emailed and I got uh, an email back that uh, she was out of the city or out of the country for a while, but that she would arrange um, to get me some work for the show. So I came home from work one day and there was in front of my door this big sign that said the end and uh, a Safeway bag that had all of these little sort of pieces of wood uh, with the stamp the end on it with a, a long sort of artist statement on the back. and. Uh, explaining that they're for sale for, for $10 to, to support the gallery and stuff. And so uh, I was really excited to sort of get some, some work by this artist because it was so suited and so interesting. And um, So your relationship has mostly been over email and through art exchange. But yeah. you haven't actually met? No. The artist? Wow, no. that's just <laughs> Maybe she'll come. <laughs> Well, that's not the first time that you worked in, in ways with people that you just know on the internet as well. I know your own painting career kind of often works with that kind of project. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that uh, is very interesting about this space, having it be a living space as well as a gallery space, and it kind of approaches some of my more um, conceptual sort of uh, side of my practice, where uh, a lot of people thought with uh, my first space that running the space was in effect an art project and um, while I didn't start thinking like oh I'm going to do an art project and it's going to be a gallery I do recognize uh, the validity of that kind of line of thought definitely and so with this space being a very hybrid space like I want to push it in the commercial direction but I also want to hold on to the enthusiasm and excitement that comes from showing younger artists, uh, emerging artists doing things that are not necessarily commercial but things that they feel strongly about that they want to yeah, see. responsive, I guess, mm -hmm. to the community. Definitely. Speaking of the more commercial side of things, um, I mean, we're going to celebrate the opening tonight, but when in the normal course of events could people expect to have access to the gallery stage um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Since I, I have a a job job. I work at uh, the Organization of Saskatchewan Arts Councils uh, as the Visual and Media Art Coordinator, so that's fantastic to, to be working in my field and I'm really happy to be a part of the, the OSAC team, but that means that I've got a Monday to Friday 9 to 5. So to answer your question, the gallery will be open um, Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 7 and by appointment during the week. And um, yeah. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Rob. No problem. I'm so happy to be here at the beginning of the end. Well, I'm so glad to have you interviewing again because <laughs> it's you been know, a while. Eh? Radio Del Arte was a while ago, but that's where oh, I cut my teeth. Thank you. <laughs> I would say there's no end to this uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs>